Hello and welcome to the Quantitative Methods for Business series where we will be discussing and seeing how we can do all kind of decision making analysis using Excel. In this video we will look at the decision making under uncertainty using the five methods the Maximax, Maximin, Equally Likely, Criteria of Realism and the Minimax or Grab methods. Let's start by looking at the problem on hand and how we set it up to solve all these problems. So here we have Bob's who's considering three options for his facility. He can expand his current shop, move to a larger facility, or make no changes. With a good market, the annual payoff would be 56,000 if he expands, 7 if he moves, 30 if he does nothing. With an average market, his payoffs would be 21, 35, and 10. Poor market will give him a minus 29, minus 45, and 5,000. So which is Bob's best option if he uses the Maximax, Maximin, equally likely criteria of realism, and the Minimax regret criteria. As we are doing each one of them, I will be explaining the method and how we're going to set it up in Excel. I've already set up the payoff table based on Bob's information. So we have expand, move, no changes, good market, average, and poor. And these are the payoff for Bob's. We're going to start with the Maximax criteria. The Maximax from the name, it picks the maximum of the maximum. So for each alternative, we're going to pick the maximum, then we're going to pick the maximum of all maximums. I'm going to start by typing max, because we're going to let Excel choose the maximum for each row. I'm going to double click on max and go and select the row for that option. So it's going to be max P5 to D5. And I'm going to press enter. And you can see that Excel right away pick the maximum value of all of these. We're going to repeat the same thing as the other cells. Or we can just drag and Excel will copy the formula. So you see instead of P5 to D5, it's now P6 to D6. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to say click the max just to show you one more time. Double click, select, and press enter. So now that we have the maximum of each payoff, we can see from the answers that the move option would be the best for all. But what if we change the values? Instead of doing or keep looking at the answers here, we're going to let also Excel pick the best answer for us. So the Maximax, it's going to pick the maximum of the maximum. So I'm going to use the if statement here, which asks for a logical test, value if it's true, and value if it's false. The logical test will be if this one here, is the max of these three, then display whatever you want. Best, optimal, if not, don't display anything. When I copy this formula, instead of retyping it, if I don't make E5 to E7 as absolute reference, then it's going to copy them and move from E6 to E8, and I'm going to lose these values. So to keep these values the same, I have to make an absolute reference, and to do that, I can simply press F4 on my keyboard and close the max. That's the criteria. Which value you want if it's true? I'm going to say display that this is the best option. If not, don't display anything, but if I don't put 
the empty quotations, it's going to display false. So if E5 equal the max, display best. Otherwise, don't, don't display anything. I'm going to show you all the formulas at the end of the video, and you can take a look at all these formulas that we used. Pressing enter doesn't do anything because it's not the best. So I'm going to copy this formula and paste it over here. And you can see that by doing that, it's going to show me that the best option is to move. And this way, if I change the value here, I don't have to worry about the answers. I don't have to worry about the best choice. So we're going to repeat that process with the maximum criteria, which is the same idea, but we maximize the minimum. So instead of using the max function, I'm going to use the min function. And I'm going to pick the same three values here. So the minimum function here is minus 29. I'm going to copy it and paste the formula over here. So now that I have the min or the minimum value in each one of them, now I can repeat the same procedure here and use the if statement. I'm going to show you one more time how to use it. It's going to ask for the logical test. So the logical test would be if this value here is the max of all of these, if it's the maximum value, remember we're maximizing the minimum. I'm going to press F4 to make it absolute reference. I don't make this absolute reference because when I copy it, I want it to change to G6 and G7. Close. Display test if it's true. Don't display anything if it's false. And we see that doesn't display anything because this is not the best criteria. So I'm going to copy that and paste it over here. And you will see that the best option for the maximum is to do no changes. With a maximum payoff of 5,000, here it's 70,000. With the move option. Now we're going to look at the equally likely criteria which is a method where instead of choosing the maximum or the minimum, we choose the average. So I'm going to choose the average function in Excel, as we did, with the max and min, select the range, press OK, and you'll see that the average is 16,000. So I'm going to copy this. I don't want to drag it because if I drag it, it will get the bar over here and add it to the cell. That's why I'm copying it. and Pasting the formula here, and we have the payoff for the average. And by looking at it, we can see that the move is the best option, but same idea. We're going to let Excel decide. So one more time, the if statement, open it. The logical test is if this cell equal the max of this three cells, Press F4 to make it absolute reference. Display best. Otherwise, don't display anything. So double code. Press enter. And one more time. Copy it. Paste the formula. And you see that the best method here is to move with payoff, average payoff of 20,000. The fourth method is the criteria of realism. And here it works in a little bit different. First, we have to pick the coefficient of realism, alpha. And in the question, they said use alpha 0.6. So I'm going to enter value of alpha 0.6 here. And then we're going to set up the formula. The way the criteria of realism works is it takes alpha times the maximum and the alternative plus 1 minus alpha times the minimum. So it takes the best payoff 
multiplied by alpha, minimum payoff multiply it by 1 minus alpha. So I'm going to pick alpha by clicking on the cell that has the value of alpha. And same idea, I don't want that cell value to change or the reference. So I'm going to press F4. I'm going to say multiply that by the max of these options plus 1 minus alpha. Another F4, so alpha doesn't change, times the minimum of the same range. So it's going to take alpha multiplied by the maximum, 1 minus alpha multiplied by the minimum. Press enter, and I have the value. Now, if I copy it and paste it over here, it's not going to change alpha, as you can see in the address bar, sorry, the formula bar, but it's going to change the range for max and min as I go down with the rows. And it does give me all the values that I need. Now I'm going to go with the if statement one more time. And I think it's becoming same if max of these three values. Press a 4 then display the best, otherwise don't display anything, copy, paste it, and we have the best decision, which is what to move. Now the good thing about this is that if I change alpha right away, it does the calculation and give me the optimal solution. So if I take alpha 0 0.3, the decision would be no changes. If I take 0 0.4, for example, still no changes. And 0 0.6 goes back to move and so on. The uh, fifth method is the minimax regret, which uses something called the opportunity loss table. So I'm going to leave that method for another video in order to do an explanation and give it its time and how to pick it. So look for the video for the Minimax Regret as well as other videos. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos to come.